All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my good buddy Steve Horn. Steve is an investigative journalist whose work has been seen in The Nation magazine, The Guardian, Center for Media and Democracy. He is a research fellow at The Smog Blog, which you can find at thesmogblog.com. You can also follow him on Twitter at Steve A. Horn. Steve, thank you so much for being on the show again. Good to be back. Thanks for having me, Matt. All right, so Steve, you recently wrote a really interesting piece on the manufacturing of last year's energy reform, and I'm putting reform in air quotes here, uh, <laughs> the neoliberal energy reform that happened down in Mexico, and how it was manufactured by the U.S. State Department and the dirty energy industry. Why don't you tell us all about it? Sure. Well, so this goes back to my probe through, am I looking through the emails that uh, Jason Leopold of Vice News made available basically through his Open Records or Freedom Information Act request. And uh, because of the lawsuit, Leopold v. State Department, the State Department agreed to release emails once a month. And in those emails, you can search them on the State Department's website. What I've been doing is searching for the program called, uh, the position called the Energy International Energy Coordinator, um, and that, that person oversaw the, the State Department's Bureau of Energy Resources, and I'm just interested in general what that, you know, what's in those emails, and there's not a whole lot, um, a lot of what's in there is redacted, but there were some tidbits, and one of the tidbits was that uh, the International Energy Coordinator, the first one named under Hillary Clinton, David Goldwyn, uh, he, well, one of the things that was in his portfolio that's listed in, in one of the emails, uh, among other things, was Pat, you know, helping pass through that quote-unquote refo energy reform in Mexico. So that was one of the top things that he would be working on uh, when he was hired. And so these were emails about hiring him, basically. And there was another document that I wrote about in an earlier story in which the International Energy Coordinator position at large, uh, the, the description for that position was completely redacted. So we don't really know how to... <laughs> yeah, let's, 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 let's take a second on this. Not any let's, specific programs, not anything, uh, not not a specific, I don't know, mission of this, which again, which, which shouldn't be redacted either. The position itself is redacted. The description the position, of the position. Uh, exactly. that's, that's wild. Right. And so David Goldwyn assume that position and one of the things he worked on was energy reform in Mexico. David Goldwyn of course is a man who before that worked for the oil and gas industry sort of as a consultant and attorney uh, and he had his own firm called Goldwyn Global Strategies. David Goldwyn left the State Department after a couple of years under Hillary Clinton and went back to his consulting firm. And one of the top things that he was working on was uh, passing, pri basically privatizing Mexico's oil and gas industry, opening it up to international oil and gas companies uh, until uh, December 2013, uh, dating all the way back to uh, 1938. Mexico's oil and gas industry was state owned by a company called Pemex Petroleos. Mexicanos. And so in December 2013, Mexico's legislature and President uh, Peña Nieto passed this bill that, that opened it up for joint ventures for international oil and gas companies. And Goldwyn, of course, worked in the, at the State Department, but then he, the, the key theme in this story is that everyone who was at the State Department working on this issue, uh, for all the main players at least, left and then went and cashed in um, you know, the, the reforms or the the policy that made possible in Mexico. So David Goldwyn uh, at Golden Global Strategies, he's been, uh, you know, some of his clients, for example, uh, he's a fellow right now at the Atlantic Council that's pushing for this. He's a fellow at the Brookings Institution uh, that's pushing for this. These same entities are funded by oil and gas companies that have been advocating for the same policy apparatus in Mexico. And David Goldwyn works at this kind of... Uh, poorly uh, understood, I guess, not, it's, it's well understood in the business press, but not really understood in the environmental world or understood very well in the progressive world. This really powerful firm called Sutherland, he's an attorney there, and they've been the main force for uh, opening up oil exports in the United States, or kind of uh, sort of lifting the curtain away from that. They, they got the first batch of oil uh, to be approved as oil condensate exports uh, through the United States Department of Commerce, and now, right now, we're seeing a broader push soon to happen uh, in Congress, but his firm uh, was instrumental in that. His firm was instrumental in something that Obama recently approved, and that is oil swaps with Mexico, so it's another sort of lifting of the curtain for oil exports, and so David Bowen's one of those guys. Another guy 
uh, that is a key player to this story is Carlos Pascual, who was the U.S. ambassador to Mexico uh, under Hillary Clinton. He eventually assumed uh, Goldwyn's position, became international energy coordinator. And uh, when he was doing both of those things, he was you know, WikiLeaks cables show that he was uh, pushing for the, the same exact uh, policy that we're talking about right now. And then he no longer works at the State Department either. He works for a firm called IHS Inc., which has an entire portfolio dedicated to uh, what's been happening in Mexico and what they help make possible in Mexico through reports that they produce that are uh, almost always funded by uh, the oil and gas industry in the same way that the Atlanta Council's uh, studies and programs are funded by the oil and gas industry and Brookings Institution. And so most of those two are key players in this story, State Department guys who went through the revolving door and now work for the oil and gas industry, and in particular, oil and gas industry that that's pushing for these uh, this privatization effort in Mexico. Yeah, it's so crazy to think about this, and again, it's, it just goes to show how unbelievably corrupt, uh, honestly, how, how corrupt the State Department is, because it really is, I mean, you know, we've talked about the State Department and its corruption with KXL and its connections to, uh, you know, TransCanada and all the lobbyists before and how, how unbelievably corrupt the State Department was then. But again, this guy, David Goldwyn, working for the oil industry, gets a job at the State Department, uh, you know, makes policies that specifically the company that he was working for are going to profit off of, leaves the State Department, goes back to, goes to a job that is specifically profiting off of the policies that he pushed and implemented. Um, it, it, that is so unbelievably corrupt. And the fact yeah. that this is not a huge scandal, uh, and, and it's just something, honestly, you're, you're writing about it. I mean, not a whole lot of people are writing about this. The fact that this is not a gigantic scandal uh, is pretty, it's pretty damning. Well, three things. So one, um, it was a big issue in Mexico once this story came out. Sure. It's been... Uh, yeah, it's just been it's it's interesting to compare how how silent the United States media has been and compared to the media in Mexico. It was front page news in La Jornada, which is a their biggest independent paper. It was in a lot of local papers around the country, um, and really, I think I counted it was probably at least a, you know several dozen different publications in Mexico did report on it. But the United States was the complete opposite. I I don't think I can count even one or two. I don't, I don't even remember any who reported on it. So. Um, Pretty troubling in that in that way, but also David to speak to David Goldwyn for just a second. In 2011, David Goldwyn was mentioned uh, mentioned in some Freedom of Information Act documents that Friends of the Earth obtained, in which he was uh, sort of seen in those emails as coaching uh, Trans Canada of how to get an approval from the State Department. And of course, David Goldwyn at the time was not working. As a consultant, he was working for the State Department as an international energy coordinator. He was essentially acting um, as a state as a lobbyist or more or less of an advocate for uh, Trans Canada in his State Department position. And then, I think just one last thing that I found noteworthy in the emails is that David Goldwyn's email address uh, that he was using, at least on one instance in the Hillary Clinton emails that I that kind of served as the hook for this story. He was using a private email address. He was using his, his consultancy email address. He wasn't using a State Department email address, which raises the, the question of was he always using that private email address for State Department business? And of course, that's the whole premise of these Hillary Clinton emails, is that she was using a private email, a private server, uh, which was why it took so long for these emails to be released to begin with. And so that, that's how this story kind of comes full circle.